since it's um, they want to I think what they wanted is to <coughs> defraud the tax. But Christ read to them uh, because if they were if if Christ had told them that it belongs to God they would they would you know use that take advantage of that and say is God they, they shouldn't pay any to tax and so is God money. So I think he, he was just showing them that well you have a right to you you have a responsibility to do your civic duty, you have a responsibility to do both Caesar and God. Any other comment? Anything you grab from that? You have something to read? And the next one brought about the um, <coughs> the marriage. It's two way of our three. Now, well, the resurrection, because the the Pharisees or the Sadducees they don't believe Sadducees, Sadducees don't believe in resurrection, but they're gonna have an argument now. So you see they unite with their they unite to um, to come against Jesus because it's something that they don't believe but they put it outside and come to antagonize Jesus about this resurrection. So what's the gist of this is that they were pretending as they know the scripture but they never knew the scripture. I said to um, show them that. Right. Go ahead. That's it. Go ahead. That's it. Okay. I was saying that is what the life is right now. I can tell you that. A lot of the people before you start to talk to them, you start to talk about the scripture. They start to tell you all kind of things about the scripture, like right? they're telling you, well, I know the scripture. But they don't know the scripture. They, they read, but they read, they read the Bible, yes, but you see, when you read it, you better understand it. So that is what it is, you know, when they meet, they, they, they meet Jesus, they're telling themselves that no, but Jesus listening to them. And then Jesus putting simple things to them and they know. The same thing with the kingdom. You can't tell anybody about the kingdom now, they tell you all kind of things about heaven and earth and all. But they never will tell you that the kingdom was set up on earth before Jesus come. So that's a different story. So, the, the whole, the, 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 the lesson from the, the Bible study is this, 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 is everybody studying Bible. People are telling that they're studying the Bible morning and evening. But they don't know nothing about Jesus personally. They, tell, they talk about Jesus, yes, they talk about Jesus, they tell about Jesus, they tell us, okay, but Jesus said, he could go be you, you follow me. Not by mouth, not by talking. And that's, where, that's how I look at this. The next, the, the next Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday. Oh, okay. Thir yeah, we're going to Thursday and wrap it up. Oh, um, but, but let me just make a quick point. Sister John, do you have a point? Or can I can move on. It's a very lesson based on the same thing, so we'll come back about, we're telling you about what. If you love me, that. that's the simple thing I put in. People say that they love him, but they're not loving. That is from the Jews, all the way back to us today. Mm -hmm. So we have to go how we live in and how we... And this is last days. Let, let me read this. Yeah. The, the, the great commandment. Yeah. The greatest, the greatest commandment. What is the greatest commandment? It's Mark 12, 20, and 24. Yeah, what the question did the friendly scribe ask? You see, they ask him question. Who they ask him? Jesus. Before you even ask a question, Jesus have an answer though. But when you're asking Jesus a question to condemn Jesus. Okay. Yeah? 28, to 28. 28 to 34. You gonna read it or you just come in? Let me read it. Let me read it. I get the Bible open. Yes. And one of the scribe came. And having heard him 
we need to get up and perceive that we have answered them well, ask him, which, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandment is, hear, O Israel, no, you hear that? You hear that point? Yes, yeah, yeah, keep it. Yeah, yeah. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is important. There is none or a commandment greater than this. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, you see, you see, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength to love his neighbor as himself is more than all all whom offering and sacrifice. And when Jesus saw that he answered directly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and no man after the dust ask him any question. And Jesus answered and said, While he taught in the temple, now how she described that Christ is the son of David. For David himself said by his holy book, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemy what thy foot do. David therefore himself called him Lord. And whence is he that is? And he common and the common people, the common people. The common people heard him gladly. This is important. Okay. Important. And he said unto them, what? And he said unto them, in this doctrine, beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing and love saluteness, salutation in the Market place. Mm -hmm. What verse is that? What verse? Uh, hmm? You read 34? 34? You read to 34? Yeah, apart 34. Uh, no, 34 yeah. if it's stop. I should have stopped by 34, yeah, but I was trying to carry away without reading this. Alright. All right, let me read the advanced part and then see people that want to sleep now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the advanced, so make sure. And well, yes, we, when we read these things, it makes good for our character because we can't behave like them. That is what you're telling you, don't behave like them. Yes, and you don't use the Bible as a weapon. As a you know, you use, you, you don't have a relationship with Christ and so your whole motive is to use the Bible as a weapon and then those guys study you. They study. Boom, boom. May excuse my queen because she's sleeping. Um, I'm going to just read the excerpts in you know, okay? The Pharisees had exalted the first four commandments. You see? And the, gone in the command, which point out the duty of man to his maker as of 
far great con greater consequence than the other six. So they're separating God's command. Why do you think they're separating the commandment? Because they want to use it for the people to enslave the people. They don't use that part of the, the, the first four. He already says no. The, which point out the duty of man to his maker as of far greater consequence so <clears throat> than other six which define man's duty to his fellow man right I'm just taking excerpt from it so what that is saying now you use the commandment and you show you're gonna lamb blast the people and show them that they are doing this this is what God said you should do. But at the same time, they're doing that because they want the people to serve them. But as to how they should relate to the people, they cut out that part. Ah, let me jump down. The lawyer approached Jesus with a direct question, which is the first commandment of all? The answer of Christ is direct and forcible. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is our Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The second is like the first, said unto <coughs> said first said Jesus for it flows out of it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself they don't want to hear that part and they didn't love it they didn't know that kind of love no they got to be servant to the people the people must always be servant to them yes and since all the commandments are summed up in love to God and love to man, right? Uh, it follows that none, that not one precept can be broken without violating the, the principle. The scribes who had questioned Jesus was well read in the law, you hear that? Well read. And he was astonished at his word. He did not expect him to manifest so deep and thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had gained a broader view of the principles underlying the sacred precepts before the assembly priests and rulers he honestly acknowledged that Christ had given the right interpretation of the law. Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength of love. And love your neighbor as yourself is more than all, all burnt offering and sacrifice. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to stop here. So, the burnt offering and sacrifice, as we talked about last week, pe these people try to earn their salvation, the things they do, the position they hold, and that is it with us today. We can't use our position, and we can't use what we have. Um, all of us are coming to Christ naked, naked. Nothing we can do to earn that. We have to all surrender at the foot of the cross. And <clears throat> the last section here talks about love to God and love to our fellow men. In scripture, Jesus said, how can you say you love God and you don't love your brother? Because 
sometimes they, they will say that. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the Jews, um, <coughs> they, they re read the scripture, but they use it for their advantage and take advantage of the common people. That's where we're going to leave it. We have the last burning point. Anyone? Go ahead. Pardon? We're going to close. You have the last burning point. What, is, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, the last thing I have to say is, mm -hmm. love, love to who? To God. You see, if it's the first thing you have to do, what did you do? The text say, if you love me, why you'll do what? You keep my commandment. So when you recognize and understand that you, you, you leave some and do some, that way bring out the, bring your neighbor. Because uh, your neighbor and them might be right there, you and them, and you're big and me, big and me, big and me. But to say you say you love Jesus. And, uh, and you're going against your neighbors and them for, for what? You shouldn't be, you should love them anyhow, you take it and crucify Jesus. So what I'm saying, the things and them in the Word of God right now is for we to look into ourselves, not into another person, you know. But the, 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 the Pharisees and them were looking into other people and they tell and they clapping and they patting their shoulder. They're telling themselves they're upright. But Jesus with Jesus bring them to a position for them to look at themselves. They look at yourself. And that is what we have to do today, look at ourselves to see where we come short, especially the last days, when the last day, judgment is about to take place in the house of God. And when that happens, if you're outside, you're outside. If you're inside, you're inside for eternity, where there will be no sickness, no death. And that is why we have to strive to do what God asks us to do. Love Jesus by doing His commandment, by doing what He asks us to do, not our own thing. That's my last word. Very good. Amen. Quite inspired. But may God help us as we in the last days we shop one another. Because we're gonna need it. It's gonna get real bad. And uh, we have to team up and study, team up and go because <clears throat> it's not gonna take some quashi to resist the Assyrian Confederacy and all that. Well, this is Sabbath school, but I'm just going off in deeper, deep, because we don't have Seventh-day Adventists with us this night. Well, <clears throat> when, we, uh, when we know what is at stake and the life and death situation, the urgency of the time, we can't, we can't, um, just, you know, lackadaisical. So may God help us uh, when we, as we go, as we have gone through this, the Holy Spirit will bring, bring some sharp points to our memory tomorrow to share if we go to church. Uh, otherwise, may these words of God build and shape our character for His kingdom. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath. Thank you for it has been a busy couple of hours for myself since I had to do the study before and now. But thank you. You are you are leading, you're in front, we are just following and enjoying being a part of this great plan of redemption. May we be, be sincere, bless Brother Ralph and his family, anoint him, strengthen him. Bless Sister Johnson and her family, anoint her, strengthen her. And all those who wish to come but couldn't come. And as we go forward, we know we are going to get lessons that we need to tabernacle with. Because these lessons, we... They touch the surface, but we going under the surface.
forget the real um, truth, the jewel, and the pearls uh, at this time. Bless us through the rest of this Sabbath in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, man. God bless you, Sister Johnson, Brother Ralph. You know, um, <coughs> well, I would like to say this, but we are, are Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah, we are Seventh-day Adventists. We are Seventh-day Adventists. Yep. But not ordinary Seventh-day Adventists. No. We are Seventh-day Adventists because we believe in the Word of God and we decide to live according to God's command. Yes, sir. And we continue to strive to live like that. We know for sure he will do the rest. We must be determined to live as though Jesus wants us to live, not as though some man saved somebody. Yes. That's it. Um, oh, but we are Adventists in wheat and tears in the church, and God is coming to separate the wheat from the tears. Yes. All right. Yes, and he will facilitate us all the way. He will do. He has done and he will continue to do everything for us to facilitate, to make it possible. And we have to believe that. But we have to trust him because we are going to see his word and start questioning and questioning whether or not we should do it, we should do it. And start flowering it and pretty it up. Like the Jews, they, they made over, they wrote about 600 and something laws mm -hmm. to explain God's law. And even when Christ comes, Christ has to teach them how to keep the same law that they, they put up and try to, you know. So we can't help God. We just have to obey Him. God, what He said, He can read because. You know, I'm um, 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 turning out this topic to the brethren to, because it's like nobody knows that this is in the right. So it becomes strange you now that, you know, I'm saying protest. The right say protest. But we are coming to a point in our Christian warfare where you know we are we are going to be tested and tried and the only testing ground for us is to face Laodiceans with all that the enemy will use them because he's gonna use them now. he's gonna use them he's gonna turn the church into our enemy I'm going to feel as if we are not supposed to go there, we are not supposed to ruffle any feather. But that's not God's plan. Feather of the ruffle. Hear me? Feather of the ruffle. Feathers of the ruffle. Or be ruffled. Rest up and may the Lord bless and keep you. Yeah, man, take your rest, my brother. Yeah, one rest. Oh, yes. Mr. Johnson, I should go and rest again. Well, next week we'll come again. Next week, uh, hopefully, we can start to uh, <coughs> start. Uh, we won't have anything. We won't have any. Uh, I'm not on it Friday night, so. All right, happy summer. God bless you.